A very good evening to you, I'm Lisa Lord. And in our news, Barbados calls global attention to bullying of nation states. Fast food restaurants told to consider how their food impacts their customers' health. The NCF offers promoters a chance to be partners, not just players, in crop over. And in sports, Barbados has some mixed fortunes on day one of Carifta Water Polo. Broadcasting from our studios in the Pine St. Michael, this is CBC Newsnight, starting now. And in our top story, Barbados has been speaking out on the global stage against the bullying of nation states while reaffirming its commitment to working with the trade union movement. And the island's positions on these important issues were articulated at two international events. Joining us with those details now is our Ryan Broom. Good evening, Ryan. Good evening, Lisa. Good evening, viewers. Well, these important issues were highlighted by Barbados at two separate events. It was Prime Minister Mia Amor Motley who addressed the problem of bullying. And that was during the second annual Washington, D.C. panel discussion series hosted by Boston University's Global Development Policy Center and the United Nations Conference on Trade and Development. She says bullying is taking hold in the global community once again. And given what's developing, particularly in Venezuela, she says small island states will not survive as the promise of independence and human rights has worn thin. I have come to office over the course of the last 10 months to understand that the promise of independence, the promise of the United Nations Declaration of Human Rights has worn thin upon those who believe that they have the privilege to determine who should survive and who should not survive in this world. It has worn thin on those who believe that the rule of law can be ignored with impunity. It has worn thin for those who believe that the charters of the Organization of American States or the Charter of the United Nations no longer has the force of rule of law. It has worn thin on those who believe that the power of commerce and the power of multinational corporations can trump the survival of those of us who live in this world. Meanwhile, as the ongoing political crisis in Venezuela drags on, Prime Minister Motley says the situation is not about taking sides. We have seen as well, with the play out of what is happening in Venezuela, a regrettable even ignoring of the fact that Venezuela's other border is to the Caribbean community. That it's not just Colombia, that it's not just Guyana, but that Caribbean islands like Trinidad that are less than three miles away at points of their coastline, or Grenada, whose fishermen continue to be affected. And for us in the region, it's not a case of wanting to choose sites because not one of us can go and vote in Caracas tomorrow if there was an election. It is a case of holding to the rules of to the rule of law. Now the country's position as it relates to the trade union movement was dealt with by Ambassador to the United Nations, Elizabeth Thompson. She was addressing the 74th plenary meeting in commemoration of the 100th anniversary of the establishment of the International Labour Organization or ILO. Now Ambassador Thompson says Barbados has pledged to work with the trade union movement as it presses ahead with plans to build out its blue and green economy. According to her, these sectors will be ca characterized by new jobs and decent works. And she highlighted other commitments by the government. Providing access to capital for women and youth to promote entrepreneurship and innovation. Improving the terms and conditions for the national labor force as well as its productivity and competitiveness. Supporting training and upskilling to provide workers with the agility the new marketplace demands. Increasing the deployment of appropriate technologies for the socio-economic growth and development of our country without compromising the centrality of our citizens to national character and well-being. And Ambassador Thompson says the ILO, the labor, de labor movement, despite numerous obstacles, remain critical to the realization of a global development model that puts people before profit. 
It is our view that the ILO must continue to advocate for economic growth built on a smaller carbon footprint, which will generate decent work across the globe and ensure the survival of small island developing states now under threat from climate change. So today, Mr. Vice President, Barbados joins with the UN family in celebrating the centenary of the ILO. We applaud the organization for its efforts to create a world where all members of the human family live with dignity. Now, Lisa, it's also worth noting that UN Secretary General Antonio Gutierrez says the ILO has been a trusted voice for social justice in every corner of the world. Now, Gutierrez says the ILO has had its finger on the pulse of people's concerns and played a central role in the struggle for social progress. So, Lisa, as you can see, Barbados's voice being heard loudly on the world stage on some important issues by both Prime Minister Motley and Ambassador Thompson. And, of course, we'll continue to keep viewers abreast on all new developments. Back to you, Lisa. Thank you so much, Ryan. Well, back at home now with the start of the 2019 crop over season just months away, the National Cultural Foundation is embracing all events that promote the festival. The NCF wants promoters to do away with what Chief Executive Officer Carol Roberts Reefer termed the us and them mentality, stating that they are all festival events and must be marketed as such. Mrs. Roberts Reefer made the call during a mix and mingle event with stakeholders at Sweetfield Manor Hotel. She notes that the players must be on board given the importance of crop over. The NCF has a key role to play in preserving the heritage, uh, the culture, and there is a way to do that by encouraging you to also get on board and um, make sure that your events are very slickly produced, can stand up against any event of, in the world, but at the end of the day, the patron at the event knows upfront this is a Beijing event. This is Barbados. And as we face increasing competition from carnivals around the region, and if you look at them almost in a line, where is Barbados? Near the bottom. Mrs. Roberts Reefer says a crop over calendar, though not the official one, has been developed and is being promoted. It has your events and it has our events. And we are going to push it to the ends of the globe and tell people to come home for crop over or come to Barbados for crop over. We also want to encourage you to join us in a joint promotion of the FET calendar. And it's very simple. I promote your events, you promote my events, you promote Tipsy, Mimosa promotes Tipsy, uh, Sokondi Hill promotes Mimosa, and you get the picture. And together we promote the Crop Over Festival and the huge happening events of the Crop Over Festival. Well, in the next few hours, members of the Barbados Union of Teachers, the BUT, will know the composition of their new executive. Hundreds of teachers cast their votes during today's elections at the four polling stations. Counting was set to get started at 6.30 this evening. General Secretary Herbert Gittins gave an overview of the positions that are being contested. We have the post of president being contested, as you know. Uh, currently, the president is Mr. Sean Spencer, and he's being challenged by Mr. Sean, Mr. Pedro Shepard, former president, and Nathaniel Boyce of the Lutheran School. For children, we have the um, incumbent um, Candace Griffith. She's being challenged by um, a former member of the executive as well, in Mr. Dwayne Goddard. And down for the um, floor membership, we have 11 uh, members um, challenging here, um, six. We need six um, here. And we have Adrian Blackman, Tara Durant, Jerome Giddens, Dwayne Greenwich, Andrea Holder, Beverly Moore, Jacqueline Prescott, Andrea Pottering, Sharice Rock, Dwayne Walker, and Asha Yearwood. Well, a ZR driver managed to walk away with only minor injuries after his vehicle ran off the road this morning. That accident took place in the area between the Blackman and Gollop Primary School and the District B Police Station about a quarter to six. The ZR broke through a side barrier and ended up in a field. What's Trending is brought to you by Trident Insurance. We treat you like family. 
And Lisa Broom is here now in our social media corner. Good evening, Lisa. Hi, good evening, Lisa. So here's what's trending for today. As Barbados continues to battle some social issues, a veteran entertainer, Desmond Weeks, has made a plea for Barbadians, but especially mothers, to take the reins and focus on the youth. And he wants to see a return to a sense of community. Well, Facebook user Ginger Critchlow has weighed in. She agrees that Barbados really needs to return to the old days where the whole village was involved in raising children and there was much more respect for elders going around. Now over to Sudan where protesters have been on the streets since late last year speaking out against economic and social conditions. Well, earlier this week, a young woman went viral for her role in the protests. She was recorded standing on top of a car, leading a large crowd in a chant. This video and the young woman's photo have been shared millions of times, and she's being hailed as an icon in that country. Now over to California, the man on to the right of the screen, he was lucky to come out of this situation unharmed. He got caught up in a dust devil, which is something like a tornado. Well, it only twirled him around a few times, but the building nearby did sustain some serious damage. And Pope Francis, well, he's no stranger to going viral these days. This time, a video of the 82-year-old kneeling and kissing the feet of South Sudan leaders is making the rounds on social media. During a spiritual retreat at the Vatican, the Pope urged the political rivals to keep the peace. Pope Francis, though, had to be helped up by his aides as he suffers from chronic leg pain. And uh, this young lady has also gone viral on YouTube. She's an Instagram blogger who broke down in tears after her account was deleted. She says a 9-to-5 job is just not for her and she needs her account back because that's how she makes her money. Hey guys, so like... I'm in the middle of editing, and my Instagram account got deleted, and I'm trying to get it back. I'm calling everybody I can, and I don't know why it's not working out for me. I'm in LA because of this. I'm in LA because I want to be on Instagram, and I'm randomly just recording this to put this in the video. I, I am nothing without my following. I am nothing without my following. Well, take a look at this footage from Trinidad and Tobago of inside the Piarco International Airport. Now, apparently, a Pakistani man who had been refused entry into the country made a mad dash for freedom. He'd been taken to the baggage claim area to collect his luggage, but he tried to escape from immigration officials. He didn't get very far, though, and he was held in the car park. So since he already missed Carnival, maybe he was just there craving some doubles or some roti? Um, I don't know, but... That's all the time we have for Watch Trending this evening. Of course, remember, you can find us easily on Facebook, Instagram, and by email. Now, Lisa, the blogger, she kind of had a thing going with that 9 to 5 not really being the best idea. Do you think blogging could be a career? Yeah, it is for many. So how about us? Because I'm not sure about this 9 to 5. Well, let's see what she's making first. <laughs> then we can talk. <laughs> Fast food restaurants are being implored to consider the impact their food could have on people's health. This call from Minister of Agriculture and Food Security Indar Weir during the opening of a new Burger King outlet. Our Sharika Griffith reports. It's no secret that Barbados has a concerning level of chronic non-communicable diseases among adults and children. Minister of Agriculture and Food Security Indar Weir says the time has come for a conversation between government, his ministry, and fast food restaurants. We are prepared to walk with you every step of the way to ensure your success. But equally, we are prepared to challenge you to consider what it is you're providing for consumption in terms of nutrition and the inputs that go in. And perhaps that challenge I want to place before Burger King today but not just Burger King, but every single fast food restaurant in Barbados. Minister Weir was speaking during the opening of the sixth Burger King location at the Ruby service station in Whole Town. Chairman of Restaurants Associates Limited, Ralph Busy Williams, says compared to other fast food restaurants, Burger King is one of the healthier options. Our hamburgers are not fried. You know, they're flame grilled. So they don't have any of those problems with health 
for the, 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 the Freud stuff present. And this is the only uh, outlet, as far as I know, the only uh, fast food joint that, that wants to serve the majority of stuff that is not fried. 60% of the goods and services used by Burger King are sourced locally at a cost of $3 million. Mr. Williams wishes that figure could be 100%, but he's been unable to persuade local chicken processors to make the chicken patties the company needs. We just have specifications that we, that we have to meet for Burger King standards, and we cannot back off of those specifications. So I hope that people won't start saying that busy one hog all when the forces to set up our own processing plant. Burger King Barbados was established six years ago and employs over 160 people. Sharika Griffith, CBC News. Patrons to the rebranded Oystens Festival have been assured that fish, the essence of the event for which it is known over its four decades, is still at its core. Now, several changes were announced along with new events as part of efforts to breathe some new life into that festival. Chair of the Oystens Festival, Tony Thorne, says fisher folk and fish remain integral to the festival. We have those traditional elements, but we have new elements this year. So we have like the mobile cinema, which is showing Black Panther, mm -hmm. um, compliments the U.S. Embassy. We also have, uh, I always see in town, I always see Mr. Trevor Marshall, he does those tours. Yes. Yes. And we yes. have to be able to, to really hone our cultural, I would say cultural ambassador, somebody like him. So he's doing those tours for Oysins. He's never done the Oysins before he would do historic bridge town. So it's exciting for him too. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So he's Not doing that. And there are limited research. spaces already. We, our first one is totally sold out, but we have two more during the actual week of um, Oysins. So we have that. We also have our children's Easter bonnet workshop. Well, it was an experience that will forever be etched in the minds of six Barbadian dancers. Aisha Komishong, Jeanne Padmore, Asha Weeks, Nandi Yard, Keisha Dowridge, and Shamika Walters all wowed the crowd after being selected to join the Brooklyn Nets for Barbados Night at the Barclays Center in Brooklyn, New York earlier this month. For Nandi, known for her performances with Trinidad and Tobago soco star Marshall Montano, it was a dream come true. The Beijing Brooklynettes were guests on the CBC TV8 program, Morning Barbados. It was a dream come true to finally dance on the NBA stage. Lovely. And to share that with my sisters here. Yeah. It was a really Aww. good feeling. And Aisha Komashong says it was a proud moment for her as well, and she sees the Beijing Brooklynettes as pioneers. We probably never thought we would have an opportunity like that. Mm -hmm. um, I keep saying it, this is stuff dreams are made of. Um, I couldn't be more proud and more honored and more humble to be one of the pioneers to take dance to the Barclays Center for Barbadian dancers. We kind of broke ground there. We were the first, and I'm super stoked that I was selected to be a part of this contingent to go, and it was a fabulous contingent. In regional news now, an electrical issue at Guyana's main public hospital left some critical units without power for hours. Most patients left the hospital since medical officers were unable to tend to them due to some poor lighting. And Newsroom Guyana reports. At the Georgetown Public Hospital on Thursday, patients sat in waiting areas and walked in dark hallways for hours after a power shutdown. Sections that were left without power at lunch were the intensive care unit, cardiac intensive care unit, the recovery department, specialist clinics, the burn unit, and the pharmacy. According to witnesses, a loud explosion was heard from inside a section of the hospital, and then there was smoke coming from a room housing electrical components. Public relations officer of the Georgetown Public Hospital, Mitzi Campbell, said a breaker at the hospital tripped and that caused the outage and the smoke which was seen coming from the panel. When newsroom visited the hospital, medical staff were seen using the phones to light hallways. The electrical department were able to restore the power at around 14 hours Thursday afternoon. Campbell said no patients in the hospital were affected, but only ones coming to the outpatient clinics. 
Speaking with Newsroom via telephone, Campbell explained that patients who came to the clinics were understanding about the outage. While some left, others remained at the health facility. Patients were informed that they could engage with their doctors, but were asked to be tolerant since the power outage affected the delivery of service. Power at the health facility has been restored and operations at the hospital has returned to normalcy.